nga gumamit nito, Riders Association at mga opisyal ng mga concerned ahensya ng gobyerno. Motorsiklo eksklusibo tuwing Sabado alas 9 hanggang alas 10.30 ng umaga kasama sina Sir Apo, Ma'am Alice at Sir Edwin. Dito pa rin sa himpilang kakampi ng masa ang bagong DZMA 1530 Motorsiklo eksklusibo. Broadcasting live sa pamamagitan ng State of the Art 25,000 watts fully digital AM power stereo transmitter Ito ang DZME 1530 Numero uno sa paghahatid ng mga sariwang balita Informasyon, komentaryo, alit, musika at public service DZME 1530 Una sa kanan ang himpilang may paninindigan Abangan, Abangan ang programang lilinaw at magpapaliwanag sa mga isyong pilit na pinalalabo. Sintido Kumon, Sintido Kumon. Kasama si Narita Gadi, Homo Bono Adaza, lunes hanggang biyernes, tuwing alas 7 hanggang alas 8 ng umaga sa ating himpilan, 15.30 DZME. Sintido Kumon. Good morning Philippines and welcome to Sintido Kumon. Good morning world. This is a full hour of talking about everything or just about everything that touches our lives. To share thoughts and ideas, to interact on important issues, to communicate information that could be of help and guidance, and to reconnect ourselves with a sense of commonality as a people, as a nation, as a member of our human family. If you, could want, if you would want to reach us, our text joke number is 0998-975-975. 1368, our landline is 861-6947. For those using mobile phones, our smart number is 0939-916-9855. For Globe users, it's 0917-822-8362. On the Facebook page, if you want to watch us on live streaming right now or any time of the day, just type out DZME1530KHZ. On the YouTube, it's lower caps, Official DZME 1530 KHZ and on the web it's www.dzme 1530.net and our Twitter account is at DZME underscore 1530 KHZ. A very pleasant good morning once again. This is Rita Gadi for your daily program of common sense. Not very common but something which really ought to be a part of our lives. Before we start our program this morning we have a reminder From the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office sa PCSO, ang bawat taya yan ay para sa kawang gawa. Magandang balita ang PCSO Small Town Lottery o SPL na sa probinsya nyo na! Exciting na mga papremyo! Three times a day pang maaaring manalo! Bili na ng tickets nyo sa inyong mga favorite SPL sales representatives para makasali at manalo sa SPL three times a day! Every day sa SPL Bayan ang panalo! Ang STL ay nasa probinsya at uh, kahit dito ho sa Metro Manila ay pupwede na rin tayo maglaro ng STL Games 3 times a day. Maaring manalo, bili na ng inyong mga tickets sa inyong favorite STL, authorized STL sales representatives and urgent para makasali at manalo. Kaakibat ng gobyerno sa patulong sa bayan o tanggapang dulot ay pag-asa Yan ang PCS O kaginhawahan, kinabukasan Lahat ng minimiti makakamtan sa PCS O Sa mga naghihintay po ng resulta ng ating Grand Lotto 65, 655 draw kagabi Ito ho yung... Uh, Uh, winning number combinations number 20, 22, 28, 38, 43 at number 46. Walang uh, winners sa jackpot prize na 149 million, 101,214 pesos and 40 centavos. Sa Mega Lotto 645 draw, winning combos number 17, 18, 7. 40 or 40 01 
At saka number 45, wala ring uh, jackpot uh, prize winner na 8 million 910,000 pesos. Mm. Swear trust. 065. Is it two lotto? Number 4 and number 17 at STL Games Paris 421. Mm. 421. Swear trust 920. At four digits, two, five. Kaakibat ng gobyerno sa pagtulong sa bayan. O tanggap ang dulo ay pag-asa. Yan ang Okay, we're back. We're saying a very pleasant good morning once again. We were expecting today the mayor of uh, Pangi, Laguna. We received a message last uh, couple of days ago that he will be coming over to the studio for an interview. And this is uh, coming from the, Kilo- the Katipunan and Democratic Pilipino headquarters. Kathy Cruz uh, sent us a message and said, that the mayor would be here at 7 o'clock, but it is already 7.46. So if it's not coming, then at least we can go over some of the things which we should have discussed yesterday. Um, Labor Day, May 1st. So what was commemorated yesterday? Well, we have the workers marching in the street, but these are not all the workers. There are still so many who were actually doing overtime work especially those who work in the BPO or the business processing uh, industry and several others in vital um, services like those in the hospitals, for instance. And of course, our government employees who are on the street, traffic policemen and all of those uh, enforcing our traffic. Many of our public works uh, workers are also on the ground. So when we say that it is a holiday, a public holiday, this does, this does not necessarily a follow that everybody stops working. But nonetheless, we are celebrating a labor code which by now ought to be either rescinded, amended, or already updated. Many things in this labor code have already been added. Uh, we have heard so many announcements regarding women, for instance, uh, the uh, maternity leaves that have been extended, several others that are actually um, provisions which already assist our workers, our laborers, and us, the working class, so to speak. And then we have, for instance, uh, many of the unions also that um, were organized early on but are not as strong anymore as what they were before. We still have the TUCP, we still Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, we still have the Kilusang Mayo Uno. And then before we had names such as uh, Roberto Oca, for instance, and Blas Ople, Secretary of Labor, who is responsible for many of the provisions that we have in the Labor Code. He is the father, in fact, of this. 1974, May 1st, when this was first uh, installed as part of the, uh, the different uh, provisions that will be helping workers. And this is for the basic rights, because that is already instituted not only in the Constitution, but also in that Labor Code, that the state or the government shall protect labor protect labor, so that involves not just the labor here, but also overseas workers. It will promote full employment. This will also have to be clarified what full employment means, because now there is a demand for the, um, the law that should really come out already a long time ago about end of contract. So many are just contractual um, workers, so they say, so they work for six months and then they're off laid off and then they have to look for another position or another job and then maybe they come back after a while. So this is where a confusion is occurring, whether it is profitable for the employer to have uh, regular employees as it is. Because if you look at the department stores, sinasabi nga nakatayo lang yung mga tindera dyan, wala namang ginagawa. Ang dami-dami nila sa isang uh, department, for instance, those selling shoes or handbags and whatever it is. So marami kasing mga kailangan tingnan dito sa end of contract kung talagang pwedeng irregularize na. Kung hindi man, is there such a word as regularize? Anyway, 
kung hindi man sila bibigyan ng kontrata for let's say um, ad infinitum until they reach uh, the age of retirement, these are the provisions as we've said that, will re that have already been studied but have been delayed as far as the passage is concerned. So again, going back to the basic rights that are there installed in the Labor Code and also in our Constitution, that the state will also provide equal work opportunities, equal work opportunities, regardless of, ito na naman yung sinasabi na, uh, same pay for the women and the men, so regardless of gender, regardless of uh, race, Race, this means, for instance, that, uh, well, now we, have, we need to have, uh, again, a very clear demarcation as far as foreign workers are concerned working here in our country. Kaya may mga kailangan halimbawa na talagang to, to spell out all of this. So that is already there, including those who have different religious beliefs kung kinakailangan na sa mga certain days hindi sila papasok sapagkat that is their day of worship. So all of these are part of what the state should take care of together with also the employer-employer relationship. So lahat yan, napag-uusapan yan every time we have a May 1st, hindi lang napag-uusapan pero nagkakaroon ng mga demand. And one of the demands that is regularly on the street when you see all of this, uh, before it was just uh, placards, now they're tarpaulins, um, stretching the entire width of the of the street, yung pagtaas ng minimum wage, they, they want to increase it to something like 750 pesos a day or perhaps a compromise like 700 pesos a day. Will this refer to everybody? So, yun na nga, kinakailangan titingnan saan, saan ito magtatrabaho. Kaya ba ng, ng uh, pinapasukan na magbigay ng ganong halaga na 700 pesos a day. For example, yung mga kasambahay, yung ba ay makakaya ng isang mag-asawa halimbawa na kukuha sila ng kasambahay, can they afford 700 or 750 pesos a day for uh, somebody who will clean and cook and wash and do the laundry for, for, for both of them? Or if they have one child, for instance. So marami, marami mga bagay na hindi mo basta pwedeng sabihin that that is the law and that is the way it's going to apply to everyone or every worker. Meron talaga mga different categories and such, as I said, uh, iba't iba rin ang mga employers at kanilang mga negosyo at kanilang business, kaya hindi nga lahat mabibigyan ng sapat na 700 to 750. But that is the general demand. So we have it almost every year, every May 1st, yan na nangyayari. But one thing new is the job fair. All over the country, we have all of these tents uh, installed in the, in the parks or in open spaces where you have uh, those who can apply or get immediate work. So sabi nga, there are 20,000 vacancies for certain jobs. Ilan lang ang makakapasok. Marami rin ang na, biglang nakakakuha ng trabaho. So sabi nga, uh, either you're qualified or you're not very choosy, but there are available jobs already on the line and this is where you have the job fair. Hindi sila magtatayo niyan kung wala talagang maibibigay na trabaho. So all of that is part of the commemoration that we had or the celebration we had yesterday. Normally it was uh, held at the uh, Folk Arts Theater where the president would announce uh, certain policies that are already uh, signed by him and that all of this will be benefiting the workers. Pero ngayon, uh, sa iba't ibang mga lugar na lang ito pinag-uusapan. We also have, for instance, uh, yung sabi nga sa wage board, isa pa rin yan na kailangan tingnan mabuti. As I said, all of the uh, different uh, firms and uh, all of the different employers, whether they can really afford the minimum wage that's being requested now by labor. Okay, so that, that is what was uh, commemorated yesterday. And as we've said, marahil kailangan din tingnan nila kasi... Uh, sinasabi nila sana naman si Presidente ganito ang gawin, ganyan ang kanyang ibibigay, etc. and all. But you know, the, uh, the contractual problem, for instance, is there in Congress. Sila ang maggagawa ng batas tungkol dyan, yung sinasabi yung endo, the end of the contract. Anong mga firms ang pwedeng magpatuloy-tuloy ng kontrata for, I don't know, how many years or until the age of retirement? Anong mga firms ang kinakailangan na only for a certain period? Meron din halimbawa yung mga construction workers. Hindi naman pwedeng sabihin na they will be uh, permanently on the job as construction workers sapagkat pag matapos na halimbawa yung kanilang pinapasukan na construction, 
eh, wala na talagang kontrata na pwede silang uh, ipagpatuloy pa. So, there are many aspects uh, regarding this and that is where Congress should already by now determine exactly where a contract is uh, available and for how long and for what kind of jobs. So, yan, hindi na sa lansangan yan na sinisigaw doon na sa Kongreso. But where is Congress now? Well, we're going to have elections for Congress this coming May 13. So you will have a new set of uh, legislators. Either some of them are already re-electionists, the others are new. Pero yun na nga ang sinasabi parate. Tingnan natin kung talagang may magagawa sila para sa mga manggagawa. The other, the other element which I have been talking about, but which I do not know if this has been considered or discussed in any of this fora, regarding labor relations and employer and employee relationship. And this is the uh, profit sharing. Halimbawa, malaki na ang kita ng isang firm. Meron bang pwedeng gawin na magkakaroon ng profit sharing ang mga empleyado? So this is in lieu of the increase in the salary or the daily wage, pwede sila makinabang dun sa mga pinapasukan nilang trabaho. Kung kumikita na ng dapakalaki, baka naman pwede that a certain percentage ibibigay ipaghahati-hati sa lahat ng mga empleyado. Also depending on the uh, level of work that uh, the person is involved in. So maybe that is also one thing that could be looked into so that all of these complaints regarding the minimum wage na hindi magkakasya nga para sa isang pamilya, etc. Baka dun sa mga pinapakusukan nila mga trabaho, pwede rin sila makinabang. The fruits of the labor that they are involved in, for instance. So, pwede rin tingnan yun sapagkat isa yan sa mga bagay na talagang makakatulong sa ating mga manggagawa. Well, we pause for a while now sapagkat ang oras na ito ay hatid sa atin ng Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office sa PCSO. Ang bawat taya, yan ay para sa kawang gawa. Magandang balita ang PCSO Small Town Lottery o SPL na sa probinsya nyo na. Exciting na mga papremyo. Three times a day pang maaaring manalo. Bili na ng tickets nyo sa inyong mga favorite SPL sales representatives para makasali at manalo sa SPL three times a day. Every day sa SPL, bayan ang manalo. Ang STL ay nasa probinsya at uh, kahit dito ho sa Metro Manila ay pupwede na rin tayo maglaro ng STL Games 3 times a day. Maaring manalo, bilhin na lang inyong mga tickets sa inyong favorite STL, authorized STL sales representatives and urgent para makasali at manalo. Kaakibat ng gobyerno sa patulong sa bayan O tanggapang dulot ay pag-asa Yan ang PCS O kakinghawahan, kinabukasan Lahat ng minimiti makakamtan Sa PCS O Sa mga naghihintay po ng resulta ng ating Grand Lotto 655 draw kagabi Ito ho yung... Uh, uh, winning number combinations number 20, 22, 28, 38, 43 at saka number 46 Walang uh, winners sa jackpot prize na 149,101,214 pesos and 40 centavos Sa mega lotto 645 draw Winning combos number 17, 18, 7 40 or 40 01 at saka number 45 wala ring uh, jackpot uh, prize winner na 8 million 910,000 pesos mm. swear tres 065 easy to lotto number 4 and number 17 at STL Games Paris 421 mm. 421, swear 3, 9, 2, 0. At 4 digits, 2, 5. Para na tangkiligin at ating laruin Loto Games Aquino Pati sweepstakes partner tayo Scratch it din ang makakaskash ng swerte At bagong small town lottery Kakinghawahan, kinabukasan PCSO. 
Okay, we're back. And if you were watching the images and the pictures coming from Japan, we had the installation. Uh, not yet, the formal installation will be sometime in October, but we already had the abdication of, uh, of the Emperor of Japan. And you have the Crown Prince Norihuto that is ascending now to Japan's chrysanthemum throne. That was midnight last April 30, the beginning of his reign, which is the Reiwa. They call it the Reiwa era. And this is coming from that name Reiwa, which means... Well, it's coming from the old, uh, one of the oldest existing anthology of Japanese poetry, the Manyoshu, and Reiwa means the plum blossoms in spring. So, yan ang magiging ira ngayon itong bagong papasok na Crown Prince Norihuto, who will be the, now the Emperor of Japan. His father, Akihito, is the first emperor that abdicated. This has happened, uh, well, hundreds of years, 18 1817 was the last time that there was an abdication. But usually, kasi, they live until they die, and then they, that's the time only that, that the next in line, the crown prince, will assume. Pero ito, bumabana yung emperor while still alive, at yung kanyang anak, the crown prince, Noruhito, is the one who is now assumed as the uh, emperor of Japan. I've already said the time before, they consider that their emperors were really um, from the heavens, mga anak ng Diyos. And the reverence and the adoration, as a matter of fact, is given to them with such respect and such honor. Nawala na lahat yan, tinanggal na yan sa kanilang constitution. At ngayon, uh, sinasabi nga, they're just ordinary mortals, hindi na ito mga anak ng Diyos. But the respect, the reverence is still there. So it is still ceremonial that the emperor presides over the appointment of certain officials, the opening of their diet, and several other uh, ceremonial functions. But he is considered as the unifying factor of all of Japan. And we know that over the years, uh, from the time that the Tokugawa shogunate closed its doors, about, what, 400 years, that they, were, they did not allow any foreign influence. And then you had, after that, the Meiji Restoration, which is now part of what is happening in Japan, where you have uh, some of these uh, eras, the chrysanthemum, the rewa, and all of this, getting its uh, lessons and many of its uh, studies and beliefs coming from the Meiji Restoration. And that is where we have, the, we have the continuation of the Bushido Code, which is part of the oral code of ethics of the well, the, the distinctive class of the samurai. And this has been ongoing since the different shogunates. But as I've said, wala nang mga samurai ngayon, but they still maintain what the samurai held as the oral Bushido code, which is a code of ethics. I have elaborated on this uh, many times in the past. I will go through that again. But uh, for now, we still have to acknowledge and perhaps uh, join uh, the... Japan, as far as its uh, celebration is concerned, for the installation of their new emperor. There will be a formal, official ceremony regarding this, where you will have uh, all the other uh, monarchs and heads of state and heads of government that will be attending this, and that will be according to them sometime in October. So we have to consider this as something which is um, still part of the monarchical rule, and one of the longest really is uh, there in Japan, although we still have in, in England, for instance, the queen herself, which is close to 100 already, and still reigning as the unifying factor, likewise, of the whole of England. But right now, they're still having this uh, conflict and problems with the Brexit, which their prime minister, Theresa May, is trying her best to finish so that that could already be undertaken by the European Union because they have already declared that Britain would like to exit from the European Union uh, itself. But there are many other factors that will have to be considered before they can just immediately make an exit. We have good news because if this is something that is already an indicative of what is happening to our economy, well, we have started... Sta uh, I'm sorry, I'm stumbling over my words again. Standard and Poor's, which is uh, already giving us the highest credit rating, rating in history, a BBB. That means that um, they have considered that our, uh, the growth of our economy is pretty strong. 
the trajectory is very healthy and that the external position of our of our economy is to be sustained and will actually um, benefit many of our public finances. So this is something which has been uh, the first time that we have this rating. It is also supported by solid uh, government fiscal accounts and, uh, of course, the low public indebtedness and the economy's sound external uh, settings. This is part of what the president has said early on. I think I've talked about this some time back, and this is before he even took his oath of office as president of a republic. He already called in Davao um, a meeting of uh, the country's top business conglomerates, uh, business uh, officials in the private sector together with those that will be appointed in government. And this is also to include not only the, uh, the large industries and large businesses, but also the medium and the small scale. And they were all in attendance in Davao for about three days. And that is where the, the, uh, the, the president, together with his economic managers, presented to this business community, private and government, the 10-point the 10 economic plan of the government. And so, as I said, this was even before he took his oath of office. Well, be that as it may, that is being followed very carefully. And whether or not there is enough uh, you know, uh, fanfare regarding this, that is how it has been progressing over the past three years. And that is why we have received the highest rating in history of our credit, and that is the BBB in, in quotation marks by Standard & Poor's. So whatever else we may be worried about regarding investments coming in, China, for instance, is coming in with, what, 12 billion or so? Well, this is something that can cushion also what has already been declared as the sustainable economic growth and the trajectory which is proceeding as it should. So that's the good news. The 10-point economic agenda is moving as it should, and it is gaining ground as far as economy is concerned. And we are considered to be one of the fastest growing economy in the world. So that's the good news. And then, of course, we are 11 days before the May 13th midterm elections and we have time and time again been discussing this and we've had so many um, observations about all the candidates that are being paraded uh, before us and then of course there is also the fact that we see their commercials on television we hear it on radio and if you are well if you live near the street you would be listening to you'll be hearing rather not just listening you'll be hearing a lot of their jingles in uh, sound systems, in, in, in the jeeps and all of this, moving around your community. And uh, m most of the time, they blurt out the name and the position and the number of this candidate. So where is this going? Well, we still have to wait until we can get a very clear message from all of them. Uh, we have major parties, such as the uh, Ocho Derecho, as they say, and then we have the party of the president, the PDP, and then we have the Hukbung Pagbabago, uh, which was launched by the mayor in Daisara of uh, Davao City. And then you have other independent, um, not, not in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in the landscape of all of these big parties. So we have the Katipunan and Democraticum Pilipino. They also have a, a number of uh, candidates, all well, eight of them. And then we also have uh, another group, which is also Katipunan, in a way where there, you have uh, Jean Hiraroso, for instance, and... Uh, Charlie Gaddi, they were both also out for uh, federalism and a parliamentary reform. So you have other candidates that are not always being broadcast, well, because it's very expensive to uh, you know, have these television commercials. But nonetheless, all of them are coming out with what kind of a platform they intend to present or they intend to do once they get elected. As we've said, we have something like 235 in the House of Representatives. We have 50 party list representatives, we have um, 12 in the Senate that will have to be elected, and then we have 81 governors together with their vice governors and their provincial boards. We have something like 144 cities and their city boards, city mayors, their vice mayors and their city boards, and we have 1,490 municipal mayors and municipal vice mayors and their municipal boards. And then we also have... Uh, for the arm, for instance, you also have that there, unless, of course, 
uh, there will be now the suspension of that election and then you will be having the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region come 2022 because right now we have the transition uh, committee that will be handling that transition from what it is now, the Autonomous Region, to the Bangsamoro um, the Bangsamoro Muslim in Danao, which already will be the implementation of the Bangsamoro law that has already been signed as a law by the president. So what is it that uh, we are looking for? Are we still searching for people that we will be um, voting for this coming May 13, or our minds already set? We've always cautioned that we have to look very carefully not just what they have done, but what they're presenting, because yung mga re-election is alam na natin. And so the question goes is, what the question is actually, what do they stand for? And how will we be able to relate to them if uh, they are going to present to us their platform, if, if there is at all any effect on the improvement of our lives? Usually, talagang ganun ang tanong, what's in it for me, what's in it for the voter? Meaning, bubuti bang ating buhay kung itong taong itong ilalagay natin dyan? That is, of course, uh, again, putting so much trust and so much confidence in the person that we're going to elect into office. But then again, as we've said, sa dinami-dami nga ng mga legislators na ihahalal dyan, at nakita na rin natin ang mga nangyari the past 33 years, my goodness, are we really coming up with a change or something more radical than what has already been happening. Sabi nga, same, same. Ganun pa rin, sila pa rin. At parang wala na rin pagbabago. But there is hope. There is really hope that we will be able to come up with a few of them, or at least a handful of them, that will be able to steer change as far as the different positions are concerned. The legislative is very important kasi ang dami nila. But local government is equally as important. I was hoping that I could have this... Um, candidate for the mayor here today because there are many questions now in the uh, local government code which we have to streamline or perhaps we should upgrade in many ways. For instance, what has been happening immediately after an earthquake? Yan, nagbagsakan yung mga commercial uh, buildings at tapos maraming mga iba na um, nagkaroon ng cracks at yung iba, the, some buildings are leaning over to other buildings. So where is this? Where is the responsibility? Sinasabi nga with the engineers, with the structural engineers, kung sino mga gumawa niyan. Pero kung titingnan naman natin ang mga kapangyarihan na nasa kamay ng ating mga alkalde, the mayors, they're the ones that issue the building permits. Walang it pwedeng itayo sa isang municipalidad o sa isang city kung walang approval ng mayor. You have to get a building permit. An ordinary house, for instance, a sari-sari store, any construction that will be set up in, in any of these local government units, kailangan merong per, permis, merong permit galing sa mayor. And where is this, uh, what, what, in, what is involved in this? Well, you have the building inspector na doon magsasubmit ka ng mga, ng, uh, sasabihin mo gano'ng kalaki yung gagawin mo na building, anong klaseng gusali? Is it going to be a, a high-rise a high rise condominium? Will it be a residential house? Will it be a factory or a warehouse or whatever it is? Kailangan ipresenta yan sa office of the mayor. So the building permit is so important. And then you have the building inspector. Yun ang titingin kung tama ba yung according to the plans na sinabmit mo. Kaya dyan nagkakaroon ng problema every time, yun na nga, merong, merong konting galaw ng lupa like an earthquake at uh, nagkakaroon ng mga, mga pagbagsak. Is it because uh, really natural disasters really happen and that the buildings cannot really withstand this? Pero yun ang kailangan tingnan. And that is why um, that is also part of the responsibility of the mayors. Then we look at the uh, team of the mayors which is the uh, municipal or the city council. Ano ba yung mga jurisdiction and territories ng mga municipal councils? Meron din silang mga, like for instance, they belong to one district in a town. Hindi lahat yan cover the whole town. Meron silang sarisariling mga territories. So what do they do? What are they supposed to do? They sit down, uh, make ordinances. What kind of ordinances are they doing which could be good for the people or ordinances of the past which they could already amend? Yun ang parati nating sinasabi. Tingnan nila yung mga nakaraan na nagawa na para kung hindi na ito um, effective, pwede nang uh, tanggalin. At kung kulang pa yung mga provisions na yun, pwedeng dagdagan. And then of course, there is the peace and order. 
ano ba ang hawak ng mayor sa mga pulis. So all of this will have to uh, we have to look into that na tayo ba ay nasisiyahan sa ating komunidad na maayos ang ating peace and order. Of course, the president himself has launched this war on illegal drugs. Pero saan nga yan nakikita dito sa ating mga lansangan? It is in the street where we live. It is in the homes of our neighborhood. We know this. We know perhaps that in some certain areas in our community, there are people that are still involved in the illegal drugs, uh, illegal drug market or um, merchandising of this and the production if it is still existing. Kung may mga sinasabi nga na marami na silang nabuwag na mga, na mga laboratorio ng illegal drugs pero meron pa rin marahil sa mga ibang lugar na hindi natin nalalaman because some of them were seen in exclusive and gated villages. So, yaan, meron ba tayong mga kapitbahay na you, you are suspecting that something is happening there? Lahat ito, oh, why am I talking this way? Because all of this fall under the, uh, under the jurisdiction also of the office of the mayor. Look what happened in Marawi, for instance. Mga kapitbahay, mga kamag-anak, alam nila. They're gathering arms and that they're bringing in and out uh, a lot of this uh, ammunition. Pero hindi kumikibo, hindi sila nagsusumbong. Bakit? Huwag nalang pakialaman para hindi naman tayo takutin o para hindi tayo guluhin. So you see how it is that the mayor, does the mayor not know this? Alam. Alam din yan. Pero para nga hindi na mabulabog and so forth. So... Here we are talking about those that we will be electing into office. But do we know of what relevance their offices are as far as our lives are concerned? Pag sinasabi nga na, what is it, what is it for us? Yun, peace and order, isa yan ang malaking bagay. Mga nananakawan, yung mga pinapasukan ng mga sari-sari stores, yung mga pinapasukan ng mga maliliit na mga tindahan, lahat na yan ay, yun na nga, nasa jurisdiction ng local government. And then, itong disaster, mga... Uh, natural or man-made disasters, isa pa yan na kailangan din pagtibayin. Alam ba ka agad kung anong gagawin? Sinasabi nga na kahit na anong gawin ng mayor, ayaw silang lumikas. Yung mga naka, nagtatayo ng bahay, halimbawa sa mga tabing ilog o nasa ilog na mismo, at ayaw pa rin magsilikas. So what do you do? So again, as you've said, yan ang merong relevant sa buhay natin. Kasi pwe, yung basura, isa pa rin yan. So many things that are... Um, moving around in the environment where we live. Lahat ng yan. Pero pag titingnan mo, papano ba maaayos yan? Ang karsada na lubak-lubak, papano ba yan gagawin? Yung mga kadal na nagbabara, sino ba ang involved dyan? So pagsasabihin natin, ah, sa mga department yan, Department of Public Works, etc. and all of that. But it still goes to the office of the mayor. Kaya yan. How many mayors are we going to elect this time? Well, I've already mentioned 144 city mayors and their vice mayors. And then you have something like 1,490 mayors of the municipalities. Kaya makikita natin kung gaano kahalaga ang trabaho at ang jurisdiction at ang responsibilidad nito mga local government officials na ito. Kaya hindi natin basta masasabi, ay, what's in it for us? That is what's in it for us. Precisely all that kind of work that they have to do. Now we go over to the higher positions, which is the legislative. Naku, Napakahaba na rin ang ating kwento tungkol dyan. But I went over several books and as I said, I am that kind of person. Siguro uh, parati na niyong nahahalata na parati akong bumabalik sa the origin of the word. Saan ba nang galing yung salita na yan na ginagamit natin ngayon at papano ito na isagawa? Like politics for instance, how many times have I mentioned this? Politics comes from the Greek word polis which means the community. And the politician that handles the community must be either the elder, the wisest, the one who can take care of the community, the one who has compassion for those in need, and somebody who can be able to heal whatever is uh, afflicting the community itself. That is the origin of politics. Ganyan pa ba nahangyari ngayon? Hindi na. It's not the wisest. It's not the one with the compassion. It's the one with the money and the influence and the name recall. So kaya nga binabalik-balikan ko parate yung mga origin nito mga ito para tingnan natin kung paano ang nangyari sinasabi natin we have become civilized and modernized ngunit nakakalimutan natin the essence and the value of how this was actually created in the first place. Now I go back to the Republic of Plato at yan ang pinanggalingan, ang pinag-uusapan na democracy 
at itong ating tinatawag na freedom, justice, and all of this. Ang sabi nga ni Plato, well, he is, uh, you know, he was the uh, teacher of Socrates, and Socrates uh, had to, um, you know, had to take his life kasi sinasabi na nakakasira daw sa mga taong bayan yung kanyang pagtuturo. Well, Plato is the mentor. Kaya pag na natin na uh, uh, yung mga pinanggalingan niyan, Aristotle was one of his students. And then of course, we know after Aristotle, many of the teachings and the philosophical and political works na binabasa natin dyan din ang galing. But the greatest and the most provocative work of political philosophy ever produced is Plato's Republic. At dyan, nais kong basahin yung mga sinabi niya dyan. Beginning with an inquiry into justice as it operates in individuals. Yan ang mahalaga sa kanya. The Republic is an inquiry actually. Yung libro niyang yan ay maraming katanungan sa mga problema ng ating uh, paggagawa ng isang komunidad, a state or a city or a country. So what is it that can make an ideal state? Kaya dyan sa kanyang libro, na ang tawag dyan sa kanyang compilation ng question and answer na The Republic, eto yung kanyang mga sinasabi. Are the masses really qualified to choose virtuous leaders? That's a direct quote from the book. Are the masses really qualified to choose virtuous leaders? Tingnan mo yung kanyang salitang ginamit dyan. Hindi lang basta leader. Ginamit niya yung adjective na virtuous. Anong ibig sabihin ng virtuous? Again, please listen carefully. When you look at the men and women that are now running for public office, it is not enough that they are good. They also have to be virtuous. Saan ang galing yung salita na yan? It came from 2,500 years ago in that book. Are we qualified enough to choose leaders that are virtuous? So hindi lang basta magaling, kailangan meron ding kabaitan. They know what is right and wrong. They know what is bad and what is not good. So do natin makikita na even in that early times, in those early times, virtue is already very important. It is ethics, the moral standard. It is not just your manner of thinking, which is logic. It is also the manner of your behavior. Yung isang katanungan pa niyang nilagay dyan sa kanyang libro. Should the rulers of a state receive a special education to prepare them to exercise power virtuously? O oh, ang ganda ng katanungan na yan. Should the leaders of a state receive a special education to perform and to prepare them to exercise power virtuously. So, yan. Ang ating bang mga nakikita ngayon na tumatakbo, kinakailangan ba silang merong special education for them to be able to perform the duties of the position that they're running uh, for? At hindi lang basta to perform their duties, to perform their duties virtuously. Ginagamit na naman yung salitang virtuously. And then this other question, what should such an education consist of? Ayon, anong klaseng pag-aaral ang kinakailangan na pasukan itong mga taong ito at tapusin nilang pag-aaral na yan para sila ay meron silang qualification dun sa mga posisyon na nais nilang pasukan. You see, this was written 2,500 years ago in this book called The Republic. Basahin ninyo, talagang napaka, napakaliwanag ng kanilang ng explanation dyan ni Plato. Ngunit pinili ko lang yung mga katanungan na merong applica application sa ating ngayon. Marami pa do, Marami dito that are really applicable. But if we are looking for an ideal state, meron tayong iniisip na marahil yun ang pagbabago at yun ang ating panaginip na kailangan ba isagawa para sa ating pamahalaan at para sa ating komunidad. Now, the other question is, should... Ito, ito, this is patama na ito sa lahat sa atin. Should those with talents, like artists for instance, not use their gifts in a morally responsible way? Or should they be allowed a place in society if they do not perform this morally? So napakaganda kung meron kang talent, hindi ba? Whether you're an artist or you have a certain skill, ikaw ba pwede kang tumulong sa komunidad mo kung ito ay gagamitin mo? 
At kung hindi mo gagamitin, meron ka bang lugar dyan sa komunidad na yan. So you see how important it is that you have a certain skill or a certain talent kailangan gagamitin mo para sa kabutihan ng komunidad. Well, that was 2,500 years ago. So now we look at the men and women that we see on television, the good one, the right one, yung tama, yung gusto, lahat yan. Ito yung, para sa ma yung mga nagsasabi na kami para sa mga mahirap, kami ang naglagay nito, kami magdadagdag ng benepisyo para sa inyo, etc. and all of that. Ang katanungan dyan, where is the virtue in all of this? the moral fiber that should run through many of the things that they're talking about and, of course, the kind of performance that will, they will be doing once they get into office. Bakit natin parating pinag-uusapan yan, yung virtud na yan, the moral fiber? Again, I repeat, tayo, human beings are made of body, mind, and soul. I repeat this and I emphasize this. We take care of our bodies, we take care of our minds, Who takes care of our souls? Tayo yan kailangan. Tingnan natin kung sa ating kalooban at sa ating sa budhi, meron tayong pang kinikilala kung ano ang tama at kung ano ang mali. Ang daming nagsasabi dyan na nag advertise ng kanilang pagkakandidato, hindi ako magnanakaw. But my goodness, where is this coming from? Because nowadays, it seems so common that those who get into public office are only for the public salary that comes from the public itself. They're not public servants. No, it's we, it's we who serve them instead of they serving us. So you see how it goes. Bumabaliktad ang kinakailangan na pinanggalingan ng kanilang dahilan kung bakit sila tatakbo para sa mga posisyon na yan. I'm, trying, I'm still trying to get in touch with some people that could be joining us, but I think Bono Adaza, who is in Cagayan de Oro, is enjoying a Cagayan de Oro immensely, and it's difficult to get in touch with him. I was expecting today the mayor of, uh, of the town in Laguna, who said that they would be here at 7 o'clock in the morning, and that would have been a very clear um, way by which we can actually question what a person would want to do for his particular municipality, encompassing the entire DILG, actually, the, the, um, the code as far as local government units are concerned. Nabanggit na natin lahat ng kanilang mga kailangan maisasagawa. And there are many more, especially if a person has already had an experience as being a chief executive a town or a city. And that's exactly where... Our, our President, Mayor Rodrigo uh, Roa Duterte, is coming from. So you could see how maliliit na bagay napapansin niya at maliliit na bagay talagang uh, kinukulit niya. Because that is what a mayor is. May nanakaw na karabaw, merong ninakawan dun sa isang lugar. No matter how far the barrio is, you go and you check and you do something about it. Lahat ng mga bagay na yan, may baha doon, merong nangyari dito, merong mag-asawang, Uh, nag -away. Now it is the barangay that takes care of it. But time before, it was the mayor who would look into this. So there we have all the different uh, nuances of what it is of a local executive. We are still going to do a codex of those who are entering uh, the legislative department of our government. But this is how it goes. Pag tayo ay tumitingin na ngayon sa balota at lahat ng aking sinabi dito, Uh, pag sinasabi nga, ay wala naman akong pakialam dito, basta kilala ko na lang yung pangalan na yan. Pero kung iisipin natin, ang daming bagay na kailangan isagawa nila. And that is the reason why I had to bring out the questions that were brought out 2,500 years ago when we had the origins of what it is to have a republic, what it means to have a democracy, what it means to be a politician, what it means to have a community, a polis, a place where you are actually going to supervise, to take care of, and to heal the sufferings of the people themselves. So you see how important these things are because these are questions we ask ourselves. Itong taong bang ito merong, merong maigagawa, magagawa para sa ating komunidad? And so you have that question. Are we qualified enough to be able to vote for those who will be entering the office with virtue? Meron ba silang virtu? Do they have the moral fiber? Hindi lang ba sasabihin, ako hindi magnanakaw, ako hindi magna... Oh my goodness, we've heard it so many times. But look into the character of the person. As I've said time and again, it is not the degree or the, or the accolades or the awards that you have received. It is not the 1,000 bills that you have passed. Look into the soul of this person who yung tao na yan may character because character is destiny and that is what affects our lives. Anyway, Okay, we go with this lecture.
I hope I'm not too preachy about this, but I will continue for the next 11 days until the election itself. But right now, I'd like to close my program again with a prayer. Dear Lord, we had some rain last night. Thank you very much. But please, let it rain some more. Our provinces and many areas are actually needing this. Now is the time for planting. Dear God, walk with us through this season. Help us and guide us in the dryness of this as far as nature is concerned. In the dryness of our minds and our souls and our hearts because we are not able to function properly unless we are inspired by those who say that they will be able to lead us to a better life. Dear Lord, guide us to in media so that every word that we speak and everything that we do will be for the benefit of everyone and we'd have some relevance to our lives. Bless each and every one of us. Bless our country, O Lord. Bless our President, Rodrigo Roa Duterte. This is Rita Gadi for Santido Kumon, thanking you all for having joined me. But right now, we have some messages from the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office. Sa PCSO, ang bawat taya, yan ay para sa kawanggawa. Magandang balita ang PCSO Small Town Lottery o SPL na sa probinsya nyo na. Exciting na mga papremyo. Three times a day pang maaaring manalo. Bili na ng tickets nyo sa inyong mga favorite SPL sales representatives para makasali at manalo sa SPL three times a day. Every day sa SPL, bayan ang manalo. Ang STL ay nasa probinsya at uh, kahit dito ho sa Metro Manila ay pupwede na rin tayo maglaro ng STL Games 3 times a day. Maaring manalo, bilhin na ninyo mga tickets sa inyong favorite STL, authorized STL sales representatives and urgent para makasali at manalo. Kaakibat ng gobyerno sa patulong sa bayan O tanggap ang dulot ay pag-asa Yan ang PCSO Kakinghawahan, kinabukasan Lahat ng minimiti makakamtan Sa PCSO Sa mga naghihintay po ng resulta ng ating Grand Lotto 65, 6.55 draw kagabi Ito ho yung... Uh, uh, winning number combinations number 20, 22, 28, 38, 43 at saka number 46 Walang uh, winners sa jackpot prize na 149,101,214 pesos and 40 centavos Sa Mega Lotto 645 draw Winning combos number 17, 18, 7 40 or 40 01 at saka number 45 wala ring uh, jackpot uh, prize winner na 8 million 910,000 pesos mm. swear tres 065 is it to lotto number 4 and number 17 at STL Games Paris 421 mm. 421, swear 3, 9, 2, 0. At 4 digits, 2, 5. Abang nga, Abang nga. ang programang lilinaw at magpapaliwanag sa mga isyong pilit na pinalalabo. Sintido Kumon, Sintido Kumon. Kasama si Narita Gadi, Homo Bono Adaza, lunes hanggang biyernes, tuwing alas 7 hanggang alas 8 ng umaga sa ating himpilan, 15.30, DZME, Sintido Kumon.